Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studios presented by Celebs.com up here at Sundance. James, Jane, Stephanie, Jerusha. I kind of feel like you're the odd one out here because you've got Jane Austen and all these J's around you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's kind of, there's a radio station in Australia called Triple J, so I highly recommend like that you guys start something up. <laughs> um, Jerusha, is it fair to say Sundance has changed your life? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Yeah. We were like crying 10 years ago when Napoleon Dynamite came here, just weeping in the back of that first screening. Like, yeah. We'll be able to eat. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> so, yes, Sundance has changed your life. I mean, I'll, I could get that call from Trevor Groth any day. Is it weird now, like having this still be in your backyard? I love it. Are yeah. you kidding me? Why is that weird? No, I mean, weird in a good way. Yeah, yeah. it is weird. That it's so close to home, it but it's so, it's such this foreign object, it's so larger than life it as is, a brand. It is weird, but yeah. convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie, for you, producing someone else's book, um, did you have, you know, was there a simpatico moment with you and for you with this other author kind of, you know, having this experience and having her have this experience? Lots of them. I mean, Shannon and I have been good friends for a long time. We have more in common than just about anyone else I know. We kind of, we do the same thing. We have, we have so much the same. And so doing this, um, we actually talked a lot and she would say, you know, what am I supposed to be doing exactly? And I'm like, I just kind of would sit there and, and shut up most of the time because honestly, they didn't want to hear from me. But you don't have to do that because we we like you. We want to we want to know what you think about things. And and she was she was great to have because one, she had a great sense of you know how things should feel, and two, she was so open to anything that was new. She loved the new stuff. She loved building on the story. It was like she was writing little mini sequels every day. Um, so she had, a, she had a really great time. It was so fun to have her. Do you find that that's the same for you as a writer when you're on set and watching these worlds kind of I am play as out? relaxed as she is. I get really like, oh wait, oh wait, this is different. And I, I get really <laughs> tense about it because I'm like, where are we going? What's happening? Um, she's a lot more relaxed and kickback person than I am, which is it's great. Yeah. Lucky for her. Nicer life. <laughs> Not quite like your character in this film, Jane. She's a little frosty, I think is the word being thrown yes. around. Yes. Controlling, frosty, um, really nasty piece of work, actually. <laughs> this is Wattlesbrook. That's a wonderful name. Uh, but I had, I had you know, so much fun with it because she, she's trying to control these people and she's got this awful husband who's completely alcoholic and out of control. And, and uh, you know, these women, depending on how much they paid, that depends on how much, you know, She's going to kind of um, endow them with, with, with um, you know, beautiful clothes and give them all the special experience. And then she's just so mean to Carrie Russell's character. It's just, it's really fun. And it was just great comedy. I love doing comedy. There is an adage, though, that, you know, that playing a, a villain or playing someone who's got that little bit of a mean streak is a much more fun experience a lot of times for actors. Absolutely, I have to admit, you know, I, I mean, I, I've only been doing comedy since Wedding Crashes, pretty much. Before that, I did most of the straight stuff, but I must admit, when I did East of Eden, playing evil, it was really a lot of fun. And, and, and since I really get to play so many different kinds of characters these days, and I'm really kind of in the phase of my career where I'm playing character roles, it was really fun to go all the way with Mrs. Wattlesbrook. And I, I thought I'd gone way over the top, but actually when I watched the movie, um, you know, I was I was just hanging in with the rest of the crowd. You know? <laughs> well, you've got Jennifer Coolidge on set as well. Yes, I mean. with Jennifer Coolidge on yeah. set, you know, there's only one way to go. That's up. <laughs> well, you say that the names are fun. Waddles Brook, I like Nobly or no, you know. Nobly, I think I know. Nobly. You know, the great thing about the movie when I watched it and I saw it for the first time yesterday is there's just so much detail to watch. It's the kind of movie you want to watch, you know, three four times because when you just start even looking what the art direction's about. I mean, those dinner tables they had. They had the most ridiculous things. They had like peacocks coming out of pies, and oh, it was so disgusting. We were eating eyeballs, and, and I don't think anyone gets that the first time they watch it. But the the layer upon layer upon layer that is in there, and you know, the, and the the way that Mrs. Wattlesbrook is, I I told her when I read it, I said she's a peacock. She's absolutely peacock. She's going to wear peacock colours, and she is a peacock, and everything will have a picture of her on the mug. You know, there'll be the porcelain dolls in her image. You know, everything is all about her, and it's, and it's wrong. It's so wrong. What was the first time you met? Was the, did you send her the script, and then you got got together for a coffee somewhere, or did you? Yeah, exactly, or? exactly like that. And, and when I met her, and I sat down, and started talking to her, she had this panic attack on her face, and I thought, oh my gosh. How awful! She's hired me and she doesn't want me. There's something wrong with me. And you know, my initial reaction was, it must be the way I look. And she said, "No, you sound American." I said, "Oh, I said, Jerusha, no, I'm not American at all. I can be frightfully British." And I started to give her about 50 different British accents, you know, from every 
county of Britain and she went, they have that many accents? <laughs> and then she, she felt safe. I said, no, don't worry about it. I'm, I can Brit up. Exactly. <laughs> James as Colonel Andrews in this film, obviously coming on board with such an incredible cast of people who were born in the US and moved to England, people from England, people, right. you know, like, it's kind of all, all over the place. Actually, I was, uh, I know JJ from like years and years and years, and so uh, I was very excited that we would be together. Uh, it's always great when you actually film with your friends, and, uh, and then also, you know, become friends with everybody else. Um, it was it was a beautiful place where we where we filmed, and I was actually just telling somebody yesterday. I think we only used about three rooms in there. Mm. I mean, the, the, this place was so enormous; it went on and on and on. And then, it, and there was like you know the breakfast room, uh, the, the whatever, drawing room, <laughs> the Tupperware room, the, whatever, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the second breakfast room, right. the big dining room, the second dining room, <laughs> the ballroom. The, it just. Yeah, it was it was pretty fantastic. I remember when Aaron Spelling was selling his house, they advertised it as having a gift wrapping room. Like That's it was yes. so big that I you can't had actually, just I wrap. can't get a house unless I have a gift wrapping room. <laughs> it just it's one of the very first things that I asked the realtor. Uh, do you have a gift wrapping gift room? Wrapping well, room. I appreciated that, that he must give a lot of gifts. So what a nice guy, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. But this place, I mean, West Wycombe Park, right? West Wycombe. West Wycombe played Pembroke Manor. In it, the has, it has a very salacious um, history, doesn't it? How'd you find it? I'm just a locations manager. It's really, yeah. it's kind of tricky to get a house in England to shoot in and, and be able to have your way with the house because a lot of them are owned by the National Trust or have a part ownership and so this one had a little more lenient. Well, they did kick us out all the time. Oh, the, yeah. the tours would come through and yeah. they would oh, just go away. And if you like touched the wall, someone would scream. Someone's for, there. Like, four, four seconds. Four floors below. Don't touch the wall! Wow. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, for you guys, was that, I mean, because I know, I, I, I remember reading there was this, I think it was a Screen International article or something way back when where they visited set and you, they seemed to suggest that you guys had a lot of time to shoot this film, that you had a, like a pretty relaxed schedule. Yes. Is that right? I mean, it was a 39 day shoot, which I think is very lovely for a first time director. Very, very lovely. But no matter what your schedule is, you're going to fill it. <laughs> if I was given 10 days, I would have been just as harried as the 39, because I just think that's the nature of a film crew. You take as much time as you have. And what do you credit with being able to have that much time? Is it Stephanie? Is it someone? Is it some other kind of force of nature? Because also having these actors available for that long is kind of a ridiculous scenario in this day and age. It's fantastic. We, I mean, we decided as we were looking at the different options for schedules, one of the aspects was that Carrie Russell was pregnant. <laughs> and she's in almost every single scene in the movie. And so she was working every day. And we didn't want to overtax her. Um, because I mean, it's just cruel. And uh, we also were, were making a comedy. We thought it would be nice to have everybody happy. You know, you laugh more when you're happier and everyone was really on their game. So I think it worked. Yeah. And for you personally, I mean, we were just, I was just talking to you, Abby. You, you know, live in Arizona. Of course, when you went off shooting Twilight and stuff, it was up in Washington State and all that sort of stuff. Being in England and having this completely different setting, what, what was that experience like? It was dreamy. She didn't yeah. have to have like security guards. Oh, well, it was really surrounding. The, there like, was no security, <laughs> and and we were on a beautiful estate. I would we'd get to work in the morning, park at our little you know circus, and then you'd walk up to the manor. These beautiful <laughs> trees, and everywhere looking, it's just it's beauty. Just it was lovely. <laughs> and Jerusha, for you, I mean, you've know, been writing all these projects. Obviously, been having projects with you know Jennifer Coolidge before and other people. Um, was this all, was that always a stepping stone for you to being a director or did someone have to say, do it, let's do it, you know, like and take that step? I don't know what it was that made me want to do it. I just, I think we had the time, it was time like uh, allowed. My kids were old enough to, you know, not be hanging off me and my husband wasn't doing anything at the time or I think we were just writing a TV show and so we just had time and the book came along and I was like, I'm not giving that up. I'm not giving it to another director. It's Bruin. It's my project, Bruin. <laughs> <laughs> so. It does, it seems like, you know, it seems like an obvious, this has to be a movie type of book, but it didn't come that easily from what I've, you know, from what I've read, I mean, in terms of, you know, studio financing and things like that, or going, you know, was that always, did you always want to go an indie route and 
I, well, think, I think we were just exploring all routes. Yeah. Well, there was a time, you know, we were looking at, at options, and there were people who were, well, we'd have to change this, and you'll have to change this, and we're going to do it this way, and, you know, first-time director, that's risky. You know, there's a lot of risk that studios don't like to take on. So at a certain point, it's like, you know what, we're just going to do this right. We're going to do it ourselves and have creative control and have fun. And, and finally, the obvious question, if you had a Jane Austen, some land that you could go to, either a sports figure, literary figure, whatever it is, whose land would you like to go to? I would go to Patrick Swayze land. <laughs> <laughs> God bless us. Mm. Stephanie? Well, this, this, is a, this is the fantasy land. If, if Austin land was real, I would be there. It would be perfect. Very cool. Jane? I'd have to say Austin Land. I mean, I, I went and bought a house uh, not very far away, uh, five miles from Bath, and lived there and lived fantasy for about 26 years. So, you know, I've kind of been there and done it a bit. So who's next then? Who's next? Yeah. Who's, we, who's next? after Jane Austen? After Jane Austen. Yeah. Gosh, you see, I always have the privilege of playing all these characters. I, mean, I got to play Marie Antoinette in Versailles, so I've done that one. Did Maria Callas. I've done, done Wallace. I don't know. I've got to think. Um... I'd go live in Dr. Quinn world any day. I've done, no, you know what? I did that for seven years. Yes. I've been there, done that, trust me. Sully, are you kidding Even me? Even Sully, he's still looking really hard, mm -hmm. let me tell you, I see him all the time. <laughs> okay, well, you know, it's really hard for you to ask me that question because I go to those lands. That's great. On a, on a, on a, on a regular basis. Um, but, uh, I, you know, Edwardian. I think something Edwardian. I, I just, I love the Edwardian period. So I suppose uh, that would be, you know, Julian Fellows. I'd have to knock on his door again. Upstairs, downstairs. Um, James? Yes. Whose who's <laughs> land would you get to? I don't know. Sports I'm, figure, literary figure? I don't know. I was asked this question yesterday. I really, I don't know. But actually, I mean, Music. I've seen some, like, uh, early reviews of this film, and they were like, it, it's like, it's like Westworld mm -hmm. without, with like real people rather than robots. Mm -hmm. But actually, I, I really like the idea of Westworld. I'd love the idea of kind of uh, going into a kind of uh, cowboy town and uh, meeting your Brenner. Right. <laughs> Very cool. Your Brenner and Patrick Swayze you know are probably hanging out together. You know, I did it. There's a lot of flies there, you Is know, it? and the horses make a terrible smell. It's, but all, it's all automated. It's it's oh, it's automated. Oh, I forgot yeah. that bit. Yes, well, with the real, the real thing, trust me, horses have a mind of their own. Very cool. Well, congrats. And it uh, must be fun having a film that's so like uplifting and enjoyable up here at Sundance. And uh, so thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Thank, Thank you, you very much.